Hey, what is up all y'all? Welcome to Summertime at the Worm. I spent far too much time in this cabin in the last week, week and a half. The weather has been horrible and, I mean, come on, just finished the cabin, had to spend a little time in here anyway. Tito's out for the weekend, so uh, we're going to do a little work towards his cabin. Since the snow's not gone yet, we've still got to wait to put the concrete footings in. So whenever he's up here and he has time, we're just going to go ahead and keep cutting trees, milling boards, setting them aside. we got uh, one or two aspens over by the shower that I want to take down. So he's out there getting the fire going. We'll burn the real small branches. The bigger branches we'll leave for chipping later and the rest of it. I don't know what we're going to do. Just leave it there. He's only got today. But the big thing is we want to try out the brand new Granberg milling rails, which I've never used before. Only ever used my giant steel setup that you guys have been watching for years. There's pretty much no chance we're going to get to milling today, but uh, I mean, we couldn't pass up this day. It's supposed to be, I think it's a high of 42, which might sound a little chilly. It's lovely. It's sunny. Everything's melting. And for the next like five or six days, the temperature just creeps up like three or four degrees every day. I think by the end of the week, it's supposed to be almost 60. <laughs> Let's go and uh, sweat for the first time this year, shall we? Is that a big old burl or a dead bird? Where do you see a dead bird earl? Oh, that's... It's probably a wasp nest up in the branch. Yeah, it's mine, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. lunch. All right, so we got this guy, we got this guy. That guy's probably good. You got an ax? Give that a thwack. They're kind of not leaning the perfect way, but I've been wanting to take them down since I built the shower. I should have done it before. Spear whack, hit, hit that one first for comparison. Give it a... Ooh, that didn't actually sound that good. Let's do the other side. Oh, maybe that's not the good one. Okay. That doesn't sound good. Okay, try that one. <laughs> oh, okay, how about, yeah. Okay. This way, it's the, because the axe is hollow. Maybe it's because your arms are so soft. <laughs> and hopefully there's enough solid wood in there to get it. Yeah, go right over the four-wheeler. If you can just miss the four-wheeler, that'd be great. Okay. Man, those are good. Spicy, sweet chili. Holy cow. They feel like they hurt your teeth. Yeah, they, they sting my molars. It's like a salted, deep fried nine volt battery pressed out to a wafer. They really zing you good. I like them. No, no. You don't know if I like them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's a pretty dope tree. There's something wrong with his hand. I think he got yep. his brain pinched when that came down. Yeah, so for whatever reason, it didn't sound solid. I don't know what the deal was. That's yeah, because it's smashed frozen. It. If that's good, yeah, like, oh, you only need, what, 10 footers? 10, 10 and a half? Yeah. You get it out of there. <laughs> Good, is it good? It's pretty oh. good. Oh, there it is. There's the dead bird. Yeah. Wow. What kind of hot dog you got there? Wow. That's so bizarre. Yeah. I'm gonna clean out its cracks. Oh my. That's cool. I never saw a burl just on a little twinky stick like that. You'd think it would uh you'd think it would kill the branch. Yeah, it's a rat rattle to it. That might be the bones in your hand. <laughs> You're getting kinda old. Over. Oh, sweet. That's me. Oh. That's 
part of the circle driveway so you don't have to back up to the fire pit. This video just got screwy. Tito wasn't able to come up last weekend and this weekend it's supposed to rain and snow again. And you might think, Ryan, where did this nice collection of logs come from? Can't tell you. You're gonna have to wait for next week's video. Generally these videos go in order one week and then the next week and the next, but these are kind of crossed over now. We will likely mill up those big aspen logs uh, that Tito and I cut down, I don't know, in the next week or two. So a next video or two but I can't wait. Uh, this is the one nice day that we're gonna have for snow the last two days, gonna snow the next couple days. I wanted to get out here and try out the new mill rails. So we're gonna mill up, uh, well, let's see, what do we have here? Three small cedars, really crooked cedar. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. That is a monster cedar I'm gonna save for later. And then these are spruce, four really nice spruce logs. So these are gonna go hint towards next week. Uh, to building stuff at the shooting range. I was kind of hoping to do these uh, building projects out of all cedar because it's just going to sit out there year round, but I don't have enough. So maybe we'll do, s actually, I actually have no idea how I'm going to build anything that I'm going to build, but we're going to make the lumber first. Let's see where the new Granberg mill rails went to. I think they're under the cabin. Y'all remember where I put them? I think there are a couple boxes underneath here. Oh yeah. Sure would be nice if I had my picnic table put back together. I don't know where I'm going to assemble these. Maybe I could do it in the cabin. We finally have a flat floor to work on. That's kind of nice. I really don't know much of anything about this rail system. Most of you guys have been watching these videos for a long time. For the last three years I've been full-time chainsaw milling with my own homemade rail system. That's because when I moved out here to the middle of the woods with a tent, I, I didn't know how long I was going to be out here, if it was going to be weeks or months. I didn't expect years, so I didn't invest a lot of money. Didn't know about the rail system then. Just got the one of the cheaper chainsaw mills I could find on sale, which was that uh, Granberg small log mill, the G777. Built all this stuff with that mill and a tiny saw. But I never even looked into these fancy rail systems, so let's see what's in here. I kind of want to see if I can figure out how to use it without any videos or any directions. I may well need the directions to put together though. This is cool. These are the same, I think these are the same channels that the uh, mills are made out of. It's kind of nice they were able to use the same parts. It keeps the cost down when you don't have to manufacture sec separate stuff. I think it's two five foot sections. I'm going to guess here that it kind of goes like that. I bet this is the little hingy. Yep, there's holes right there. And then somehow I know that this thing attaches by pounding this down into the log. So I'm guessing that goes right like that somehow. That one go in there. It looks like it goes in there. So Granberg sent me this. It looks like their standard rail system is two five foot chunks, which is kind of cool. It's modular. You can stick as many together as you like. And they said, we're going to send you this 10 foot rail system. And I was like, ah, I, you know, I, I like to mill at least 12 foot logs. So, so they sent the add on too. So together I got 15 feet. Because who has time to swing a ratchet? easy to put together. Uh, if you do end up buying some of these for some reason, uh, one thing that I wasn't really clear on is each one of these rails has a hole in one end and not in the other end, but the rails go the same direction I believe with the hole in the same end of the rail system. Alright, let's give them a go. I'm kind of curious to use these, see how they do, trying out the real thing. Uh, I think I'm going to try to, I think these spruce logs actually are less than 10 feet, so I won't have to put the third section on there. Seems like it'll be easier to try out that way. Let's see if I can even get this over there. 
Oh yeah, no problem. I cut these spruces down. They're completely dead all the way up to the top. Some of them were really tall. I think I got three of them here, or maybe two of them here. The other two I left down for Cheeto to use for his cabin. But they're not rotted at all, and they're already seasoned, so this will be really interesting. I haven't milled something like this before. I mill so much cedar. Oh, yeah, look at this. It is completely seasoned. I don't know if this can be full of bugs or what, but cedar is really hard to peel with a draw knife. And this stuff, just like I thought, comes right off. Oof, yeah, that might be buggy. As you'll see in next week's video, I had to drag these through a whole lot of mud to get them up here. That's a good thing. If this had seasoned to where the bark fell off on its own, I wouldn't be able to mill it right now very easily because all that sand and gravel and stuff in there, you can't run the chainsaw chain through it. Easy way to get rid of that is to power wash it, but of course I don't really have power or water out here, so this is perfect. Let's see here. I'm gonna slide some of these around a little bit. I'm guessing you want these cross pieces pretty near the end of the log. And also, this is about exactly the size log you can do with this. So you need it overhang enough to get the mill on it, and get it started, and the same on the other side. If this was another six inches longer, this log you'd have to put the extension on. Have a lot more to deal with. So let's guess about there. You can kind of tell when stuff like this is made by a company that knows a little bit about what they're making it for. Like the fact that all Granberg stuff is adjustable with a scrunch, like the same tool that you use on a chainsaw, kind of tells you something. You don't have to get out like a separate set of tools just to set this up. I going to say, I don't know how high you need those uh, adjustment screws in general, but this seems to be all right. And it looks like you just get all the screws to touch the log and kind of sight down here to take the swoop out of it. That's pretty darn flat. Ooh, those are nice. Really nice, they bite, they bite great. Greatly, greatly, superbly, wow. Those suckers really sink in. I was kind of thinking this was gonna be a little bit more uh, wobbly, but yeah, those dogs are sweet. Just that's not gonna work. My cheapo bubble level. Don't worry, I've got one more. Okay, and my good one doesn't fit either. Here we go. I don't have an in-between. I got a couple pocket levels and I've got a four foot, but not, nothing in between. Wow, that's pretty darn close. Sweet. Okay, I gotta admit something. I thought this was gonna take way longer to set up. When I saw like all the parts, you got eight adjustment screws, four dogs, sections of mill rail, I was like, It'll be fun to try, it'll be lightweight. It's nice that it comes apart if you wanna take it somewhere. But for me, instead of 100 parts, I like my setup with four parts. But that was really easy to set up. <laughs> Most of you have been watching for a while, seen these a thousand times, but that's just a sheet of, I don't know what it is, quarter inch steel or something. I made a video on building this. This is just scrap steel I got from a welder. Cut two of these plates, and then you got big fat bars that lay in there, that's it. Screw this to the end of the log, level it, throw the bars in there, and you're off. But this, I don't think this took any longer. That was really quite easy. It was a really flat log, so everything was almost adjusted right when I put it on there, but we'll try it on several more and see. But I'm surprised. That, that was really easy. Wow. And I'm also very surprised at how tough this is. That sucker is really on there. I was going to use the new really big mill does it fit on there i gotta adjust it a little bit 
uh, to do this for no reason. It's just super overkill, but since this, you know, Granberg mill and the saw are still kind of new to me, I thought it'd be fun to rip through these. However, these some of these logs are really tiny, like so tiny that the uh, on-off bar here might not catch it with the winch on here. I slide this over another half an inch, but it might still be too wide. And I don't really want to pull that winch off of there. So I think we'll use the other mill. That boring old thing, ugh. These are perfect logs for it though. Well, here's one plus for my homemade mill system. When you do the first cut with my plates and bar system, you're always five and a half inches down to make your first cut. And that just barely clears the bottom of that plate. This one, since you're pretty consistently changing the height of these adjustment screws, you're gonna have to measure each time from the top of the rail down to the lowest screw, right? Uh, then again, you could just choose the depth that is the furthest down that one of those screws could go. You could mill that, and I usually end up taking the first cut of the log, the rounded part, flip, flipping it upside down and then milling like an inch, inch slab off of it. So it looks like this one is the furthest down. So top of the rail to the bottom is about four inches. So let's go four and a quarter for the first cut. And it looks like as long as you don't sink it below the top of this cross beam, looks like four and a quarter, four and a half would out four and a half would always be fine. Four and a half. So four and a half to be clear of the top of those other bars. And see, this is the same channel as the easy rail systems made out of. That's kind of cool. I don't imagine those would go in. Well, maybe I should have measured those too. Oh no, that's in the crown of the log. That's not going to be the first thing you hit. From the top of the bar to the bottom of the bolt is about four. So four and a half's good. Come on, can you please reassure me that I'm doing this right? I really don't want to look it up. Eh, what's the worst that can happen? Just thought of something else with my rail system it's only connected to the log at the very ends and then the bars are free floating and you see usually when people are milling they mill a few feet and put some wedges in usually not felling wedges you cut some hardwood wedges and use them to stick them in i just use the felling wedges they work for me but i generally only put the wedges in at the very end when i start because the plates attached there as you cut through the end of the log will sag down and it'll actually move the bars so you get this weird whoop -dee in your log or in your lumber i mean this one is supported here as well so if you don't put wedges in when you get past this spot the bars are going to sink down and you'll get that weirdness down here so you actually do have to wedge this as you go all the way which means i'll probably have to cut some real wedges just for this because felling wedges they're just a little bit too like a too fat of an angle that they often just from the vibrations will fall out they don't fall out when they're stuck in the end generally but in the middle of the log i bet they're going to vibrate and just come out of here i don't even know if i have enough felling wedges plastic ones for this but we'll give it a go This adjustment bolt rattled right out of here. Well, let's check and see if it's all still level. Ooh, that is not level anymore. It's uh, out of level the opposite way, not the one that rattled loose. Maybe I didn't have this one tightened. It was maybe it was just sitting, just barely sitting there. It's probably my fault. Yeah, that was my fault. Several of them were just apparently about the right height, so I left them. I bet that's, I bet that's on me.
Whoops. Perfect. Looks like we measured right. So that gave me about a half inch before I hit that bolt. Man, I was sure worried cutting underneath these dogs that I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna hit one, but I guess it's not that deep. It's probably only less than an inch deep in there. I mean, I'd say for never having used anything but my own homemade rail system, I think that went really well. It was pretty easy to set up, pretty easy to put together, pretty easy to adjust. Let's uh lop this out of here and then see what the cut looks like. I mean, the cut's gonna look fine, I'm sure. I haven't milled very much in the last few months because I made all the lumber for all this stuff, I don't know, like last fall, maybe a little bit in the winter. But since then, the only milling I've done is with the big mill and big saw, and that seemed like unbearably slow. <laughs> I might see if I can get a couple, a couple cuts with the big saw, and then if I have to where the log's skinnier, I'll go back to the small one. It's just so much more fun having all that horsepower. Pretty easy to take off too. I have not milled much spruce out here, maybe a few. That is some perfect building wood. You know what I'll probably do? Oh yeah, I forgot. I don't know what I'm using this for. I was thinking I was gonna use this for like two by fours or something. Probably do one and a half inch slabs, and then I've got two by fours or, you know, close to two, probably two by sixes or two by eights out of this thing. It's pretty pancake flat. It looks like I've got a little bit of a high spot in the middle, maybe like a, I don't know. It's so little, it doesn't make any difference. But I don't think that's any different than uh, using my other setup. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Only uh, one other issue I'm gonna have is, uh, you know, that's actually got screws and moving parts and bolts you gotta be able to break free to shift stuff around. And of course, most people take that and throw that in their garage or their barn or something. I don't really have an inside here, so that thing's gonna have to stay out. That's not true. I might be able to fit it in the garage here. I wonder if I can hang it up. Well, I could break it into two pieces and hang it on the ceiling here. That'd be all right, or three pieces. My big monster rails uh, sit out here year round right here. You see there's almost no, oh, this one's got a little bit of rust. But I put this, after like a year, they started getting a little rusty. I took a wire wheel to them really quick, and then I sprayed this crap on it. This is gnarly stuff. I guess gnarly is not the right word. It's just like, it's thicker than you'd think. I don't know if you ever used this stuff. It sprays out, but it's like, I want to say it's like reddish brown or something. And not a very thin liquid. It took a rag and wiped these all down. And it's been, I bet it's been two years they've been sitting out here. Spring, summer, fall, rain, snow, everything. And they don't really get too rusted up. I don't know, maybe I'll have to hose down the new rail system with this. Or I could just take the time to put it away every night. We'll figure it out. All right, let me blast through this log. And then uh, we'll do another one with the rails. Let's see, will this, oh, it fits. We're going to do it. <laughs> I try to remind myself all the time, you know, you have those thoughts like, what's the best way to do this? What's the fastest way, whatever. And to put that completely out of my head and just say like, what do I think would be the most fun thing to do right now? Like, what's the most fun way to mill this? Right now, it's using those Grandberg rails and using the giant sawmill. It's way overkill, it's not necessary, but I think it's gonna be a lot more fun just cause I haven't used that this much. The one thing I like, so when you've got a really long bar, like way longer than you need, you're losing power on the saw because it takes power to rotate that long chain. However, if you've got a really long chain, you've got a lot more teeth and it's so, for the same amount of board feet you cut, it'll stay, the chain will stay sharper longer. So a 36 inch bar on here when I'm only cutting at most 12 inch logs, I bet I can cut that whole pile of logs with just this one chain before it gets too dull. I mean, it also helps that I've got close to twice as much horsepower with this saw, so even as the chain gets dull, it'll still just scream through this. So you know what? I don't care if I've got two and a half feet of bar sticking out the end. I'm going to use this thing. One thing I keep noticing is that this is the way the handle's supposed to go on here, so you've got control kind of in the middle of the, of the uh, mill. My little mill, I had to set it up with the handle backwards, but I'm used to using it that way. I'm used to it hanging off the backside. I had to do that because I wanted to fit that giant boat winch on there. And the only way you could get the handle to spin around on the winch was to move this out of here. 
And this actually, uh, this handle works quite nice when it's put on the right way. <laughs> it takes a minute for the saw to warm up. Probably should have idled a little bit first, but man, once it gets going, it's just running through there. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is such a monster. Wow, this is so nice. Completely seasoned. Dead standing. Lovely. Oh, there's one of the grubs right there digging through here. I'll put him in my uh, bug bin. We can look at him at the end of the day under the microscope, eh? What am I, Canadian? Oh, might as well be. This thing has been dead for quite a while, and you can see all the little tiny rubber bug trails underneath here. I mean, it seems pretty solid. I only found one spot that was tiny bit rotty on the other one, on the first log. Now uh, this is the last log. You see the little dark spot there, one there, one there. I don't know if anything's living in it right now. There's one. I'm thinking when I use these, I might uh, build whatever I'm gonna build, spray it all down with some kind of like bug grub killer and then I don't know, I've never painted anything out here, I don't think. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Three years of straight building, and I've never... Oh yeah, I painted the door gray on the cabin. Get a can of cheap exterior paint, maybe like a nice lime green, and coat it over. I mean, the cool thing is, if there are bugs in there and it rots out in a couple years, I'll just rip it apart and build it again. It'll give me something to do. I get bored easily. So I'm thinking for this time, second try here, best thing is probably to set these bolts halfway so you've got more adjustment up and down, and then clearly get them all making positive contact with the log before you nail these in. Does that make sense? That's how I'm going to do it. Hey, please, watch uh, videos from Granberg on this stuff. See how you're supposed to do it. If you're looking for intelligence and skill, you've come to the wrong place. All right, let's make sure these are all touching. Ah, see that one is floating there. That would probably rattle loose later. Okay, they're all making contact. Very flat, maybe just a tiny squinch right here. Is that called a squinch? I think so. Okay, that's a better starting place. And I feel bad for anybody that came across this video thinking they were going to see a professional using this, giving a real well thought out, methodical review. If that's you, you, you haven't watched ringworm videos before. If you decide you're going to go out and get one of these rail systems, you'll already have seen all the mistakes. You won't have to make them yourself. If somebody just gives you a five minute video and says, set it up like this, do this, and then mill it off, you're done. You probably go put it on and make a mistake like not having all these adjustment bolts touching the log before you hammered these in. See, I'll make the mistakes for you. You're welcome. It's going to come up a little bit. You know, it's uh probably not a bad thing to make some larger adjustments once you've got these dogs pounded in because it tightens everything down. You know, as you're lifting, you're putting the screws in and lifting the rail up, the dog is like pulling back against it. I mean, I had to adjust that a lot, but it is like rock solid now. Yeah, they look pretty darn flat. Really good. Yeah, again, I'm really amazed at how sturdy this is. I gotta use the word again, sorry. That's dope. Ah, I forgot, I gotta measure again. Or do I just do, I'll just do four and a half. I just had another thought, difference between this and the Monster homemade rail system. If you have a log end to end, it's laying down like this, it's skinny on this end, and it goes to really fat on this end, you don't generally wanna take the same cut, the same thickness, like when you start and come out, you don't want to take a little slab that goes like this down the log because then as you keep going and taking boards out of it you end up with the last is this big weird triangle
So if your log is the same diameter from one end to the other end, the first piece you take off will be like this. The last piece will be like this. But if your log goes from skinny to really fat and you take your first piece off like this, your last piece will be like fat on this end and skinny on that end. So usually you want to try to cut the middle out of the log and then you get a little bit of a triangle like this off the top It'll be a little fatter on one end and skinnier on the other and the bottom will be the same thing It's fine to just take this piece the first one off the top like that kind of mill your log at an angle But some of your boards end up weird like your your board will be fat in one spot and skinny in another spot instead of more consistent and to take care of that with my other mill setup you measure the center of the log on both ends and you go up the same distance. So you're taking the middle of the log out. So you screw one plate here and the other plate horizontally over essentially. I guess with these mill rails you could sort of do the same thing. On the skinny end of the log you'd have to put the screws all the way down to pull the rails up higher and the other end do the opposite. But it would be a little more tricky to actually measure it out. This would just take a little more thinking and a lot more adjusting I think. I do know you can get, if you, if you have a log that's real funky and wavy, these screws won't have enough play in them, enough travel, and I think you can get longer screws. So I, I mill a lot of logs that have bends in them, and if they're just bent one direction, like they bend like this, you can mill it just fine. The top of it, you get like some triangles off, and the bottom board ends up having a fat spot in the middle. But with this, yeah, there definitely isn't enough travel in these bolts to do like that log right there. You wouldn't be able to have the rail sitting here and on that end and still get this part to touch the adjustment screws because you'd have to set them so low they'd fall out of the mill. But yeah, we'll have to get some some different bolts for these to do uh, wonky or logs. Wonky? Yeah, they call them wonky logs. That's one of my favorite cereals when I was a kid. I got that screwed right in, right in there, tightening those in. Well, those spruces went great. I'm gonna do a couple of uh, cedar logs here. I'm wondering if the slipperiness of the log is gonna make any difference. So once you peel the top of these, they can be really slick, especially when the temperature's like this and this comes off in one big sheet. This is like, uh, like buttered plastic. I mean, the dogs are still gonna stick in it fine. I don't know, let's just see what happens. Man, is it nice to be peeling logs that aren't frozen. This takes about maybe a quarter of the time that they do in the winter when you just have to like break them off in little tiny bark pieces. Yeah, this will also be an interesting one because it's got a fair bit of crown to it. Not a lot. Enough that it'll take a lot of adjusting with the screws. Actually, this log is so narrow that these aren't going to go all the way down. So I see there's another set of holes here in the middle. Probably have to move those over. But the middle of the log here is the high spot in the log. So I think I'll be able to leave them wide because they can go way down there and just barely touch. Yep, that'll work. Yeah, it's got a little more wobble with the adjustment screws in the middle, which I guess you'd expect. Not as wide of a footprint. I think it's going to be fine though. Alright, uh, had an issue. 
couldn't figure out why the mill stopped all of a sudden. Boink! At the top of that. Even though I chainsaw mill basically full time, that's all I do. There's still a lot of learning. If I'd have thought about that ahead of time, I realized that I will next time. I'll check to make sure. So I could have put this down another quarter inch. Basically just put them all down another quarter inch. And even with that bow and the log, there's still a lot of play in these. Like I've got another inch I could put that down. So it's just a learning thing. See, now you don't have to learn it yourself. When your buddies are like, hey man, how do you know how to do this so well? And he says, this one bozo online, he taught me everything. He taught me all the ways to screw up. The only way I can think to get around this now is just to take it out. I mean, it's all pretty well locked in. I'm sure there's some weight on that, but I'm going to pull that all the way out. And then as I'm milling along the last little bit, I'll just support the weight of the saw, hold it up a bit. Oh yeah, no problem. I think that was the lowest screw. No, it was this one. And look how close I got to it. It's about an eighth of an inch or so. I measured these dogs too, and I had another half inch before I hit one of those. This is about the smallest log I ever mill this size. It's like right on the verge of just being set aside to use as poles for something or cut up as firewood. But I was curious to see this rail system and using the giant saw and giant mill if it would work. And it was totally fine. When I got this saw and mill, I thought I would probably still be using the uh, 261 and the small log mill together for tiny logs like this. But looks like I can keep using the big one. Hey, it's like you're getting cardio you're running so fast through this stuff. Yeah, there's just a little bump there from where I took that screw out. And I, err, I always err on the side of lifting the saw up too much rather than letting it dive because now I can just knock this off. This log is about two inches too long to just use two sections. So I put the third section on here. However, it doesn't seem like you need six of these crossbars for such a short log. So I don't know what the best thing is to do with this. You can't really slide them all together. I think I'll just take it off. See how that goes. Yeah, I don't know. This will be fine. I'll have one, two, three, four, five cross pieces, ten screws to set, and five dogs. So this ought to be pretty sturdy. I also see that it makes sense when you first just lay this on here to take a second and get it lined up as best as you can on the log. You could actually tweak it a little bit to one side or the other and still get it all set up and it would mill fine. But if it's tweaked a little bit, say that way, you see how far down this screw is in here. That just means the first slab I have to cut, I was cutting out like four inches, now I'm gonna have to go down to four and a half for that first one. Which, if you're going to take this piece, flip it over, and mill something off of it later on, doesn't matter. If you can't quite, it's too thin, then it would, it would have paid to move this over just a little bit. This is the last one I'm gonna do today. It's the biggest one and I'm getting tired. I should probably get the log lifter. Eh, let's give it a go. Oh, that's a heavy one. Oh, crap. Suck it, log. Now, if one of you jerks will lift the other end of this up for me, I'd be uh, very appreciative. Nope. Okay, I'll get it. that end of the log too. So this is what I'm gonna have to work out figuring out in my head. This log doesn't have a monster taper to it or anything, but this is, you know, several inches fatter down to this end. So in order to not just take the top little layer off to try to cut deeper into this to get the middle of the log out nice boards, I squatted these bolts all the way down 
And you can see it was still even with the top here. I just barely touched it, so I went over it. And then the other end, maybe not this one, but this one's jacked all the way up. And I still wasn't able to get enough angle on it. So you could fix that by getting the longer adjustment screws. But you're constantly back and forth. Like, is the screw, if you got the six inch screws in it, but you only need three inches of it, is it going to stick out the top and you're going to hit it? I just don't know if you'd constantly have to switch out the adjustment screws for every log. I don't know. I did take a giant slab off that first cut so I can flip it up upside down and still get a one and a half inch board out of it. And that way I didn't have to worry about measuring uh, where these were sticking down, trying not to hit them. You know what I just thought of? When they sent me this mill, they sent me our actual mill winch and I haven't had the opportunity to use it because I've only been milling really light stuff. Let's give it a go. One thing that's definitely cool about this winch is that it's two to one. So it's going down through a little pulley and back here and it's a lot smaller winch. So you have to do a lot more turns for a given distance, which actually would be nice. Using this big old winch, you often, I mean, you're cranking it really slowly if you're going through, you know, harder wood that's the full bar length. And sometimes you have an issue with it. A little bit of a crank and it bogs down. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just so different. For one, it spins the opposite direction. It's mounted on a different part of the mill. It's two to one. My feeling is this is a much better system, but it's gonna take me a little, while, <laughs> a little while to get used to it. I felt like I had no idea what I was doing. Am I cranking it the wrong way? Or am I drunk? I might be drunk. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I gotta haul through that and get cleaned up before it gets dark. I think it's gonna start raining pretty soon too. That was really fun. I, I enjoy this thing. It works, I don't know. I, I didn't really think about it that much, so it's not like I didn't think it was gonna work. But again, I'm just used to this big, heavy four-piece system that I've been using forever, so I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. It's great. I think for all the milling I've got in the near future, I'm going to use the, the new rails just to get used to it. You know, it's one of those things when you're not used to using a new thing, especially a tool, uh, it just feels kind of weird to you. But yeah, I don't, I don't really see anything about those that would make it so that I'd prefer to use my old rail system versus this. It's pretty cool. Okay, I got to go. Oh. We're going to look at that grub. I'm going to finish milling these, meet you in the cabin, and i got to get a shower. Let's say an hour and a half. All right, let's take a look. I don't think I'm going to be able to identify this grub anyway, but I'm really curious what it looks like. It's so much smaller than uh, all the grubs I've pulled out of other species of trees. Oh, one other thing I've got to look at here. The last log that I milled up was the biggest one. It was from the bottom of the biggest spruce tree and it was by far the softest. All the rest of the logs were like perfect building materials. That one just had a little bit of sponge to it. And when I cut, you know, the grains are running around the log like this. When I cut the last slab off or the first slab, either one, and the grains are real wide in the board, in between each one of the grains, it was kind of white. And I, I just couldn't tell if it was some kind of rot or something. So I cut a little piece off. I don't know if you'll be able to see how much white is in there. It's like half white, half wood. I wanted to see if that's a fungus. If it is, we should be able to see really tightly packed cottony looking stuff, the mycelium. And even if with this zoomed all the way in, it's so hard to tell what it is. It does look really soft, don't you think? Oh uh, yeah, I think if I get all the way in there, I can, I don't know. I assume that's what it is. I think that's all full of some kind of fungus, but I do not really know. All right, let's look at that freaky deaky little grub. Sounds like the Luftwaffe is coming for us. Oh yeah, they're so gross. Why, why do I even bother? Especially their gnarly little heads and their gnarly butts. Ugh, you can see right through them. Look at those weird red spots. All right, I don't know if we learned anything from that, but at least you know what's crawling around inside my lumber. All right, well, that was really, really fun.
I enjoyed using a new different mill setup. That winch actually worked out really well. It's just, you know, I've got a lot of learning to do. I especially like that where the line comes into the winch drum, there's a little feeder hole it runs through. So the line's guided into there. With my other winch, you're cranking along, you get to the end of the board, you reset for the next board and I have to go back to the tree and drop my choker down just like an inch or two. Otherwise the line's feeding at a funny angle and it kind of overspools and stuff. This one, you set it to an anchor and you're good to go just because it has that little hole that feed back onto the drum. By the way, I should probably say, uh, Granberg didn't ask me to uh, do a review on the new 36 inch mill that I got or, or the rails. I just sent him a message. I said, this mill is amazing. I've built basically my whole life with your little tiny mill out here in the last three years and asked if they'd be willing to send the 36 inch mill. I got nothing but really nice responses. They sent the mill, the winch, the rails, all that stuff. So they didn't ask for a review and I'm really thankful for that because I, I don't want to do reviews. I don't want to tell people what they should get or what they shouldn't get. So since this wasn't a review video, you can expect you'll see those rails in tons of upcoming videos. If you want to learn more about how they work, how well they work, what, what they do well, what they don't do well, just keep watching the videos. Or, you know what you could do, be really wild? You could subscribe. Oh, that feels so gross to say that. Sorry, I won't say that again. One thing that is really cool is I took that back apart. You loosen four bolts, the five foot sections pop apart. I stacked them up, put them underneath the cabin. So storage is not an issue at all. All right, I gotta bust out the bigger microscope and figure out what this white stuff is. Maybe we'll use that lumber for something at the shooting range. Doesn't matter if we blast holes in it. Okay, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. See you next week.